So before arriving on Tuesday, Brown tweeted, quote, I'm looking for a shut air advantage adult large helmet that was manufactured in 2010 or after. In exchange, I will trade a signed practice worn Raiders helmet. All right, we got to bring Jeff Darlington back in. First of all, I'm confused by a few things here, Jeff. One, why does he need to specify adult helmet? I, I thought that was understood. And, and two, a, a practice worn helmet? What is this? Can't be serious, right? Was he seriously asking someone on yes. Twitter for help with his helmet? First of all, I can't stop laughing just at the tweet <laughs> itself. But absolutely, he is dead serious about this. I've spent enough time with Antonio Brown to know that he's a quirky guy. Like if you're around him, you, you'll actually kind of like those eccentricities. I understand to the public, they look at it and they're like, this guy is out of his mind with this. But I'll tell you this: it actually appears to be working. The first things first, he filed the grievance to the NFL. He got denied on that. But what he found in the process is that he can, if he can find that air advantage that was made within the past 10 years, that he can actually likely wear it because it, the problem is not that the helmet itself is on the banned list that the NFL has. It's that any helmet that's made older than 10 years is automatically on that list of helmets you can't wear. So if he can find one that was made within the last 10 years, he can actually find a loophole that will allow him to wear it until that 10 year gap hits. This is dead serious, Sam. And I'll actually tell you this, it looks like crazy as he might be that this is gonna work out and that Antonio Brown is going to wind up with the monster contract people thought he wouldn't get in the helmet that people thought he wouldn't be able to wear. So okay, he seems Jeff, to have it figured I out. I, all I've done, I, you, you're the investigative reporter. All I've done is look at the responses to the <laughs> tweets and everybody's like offering up their I high school one. helmet. Do you know, has he found anything? Yes, Sam, he has found the helmet. <laughs> like he's found out actually several iterations of it and now he has to get it uh, reconditioned and approved by this committee that does exactly that. But again, it looks like it's going to happen. I would put the odds on Antonio Brown not only having that helmet in his possession, but being able to wear it come the start of the season. It's just all unbelievable. I, but thank you, you, Jeff, for helping us out with this. Greeny, the best thing about this to me is that we're going to have to do this, I think, again next year because I think it expires after this year. So I can't wait till next offseason. I'm, 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 I'm at a loss. I, I, I think that my new favorite quote in the history of this show is when Jeff Darlington said of Antonio Brown, he's a quirky guy. Um, okay, so... Where do we even begin? Let's, let's move past all of that, okay? Let's actually try and talk about some football. You are a receiver. He is a receiver. He is a great receiver, but he has never played with these coaches. He has never played in this scheme, and he has never played with this quarterback. So the time he has already missed and in theory continues to miss while he rehabs his frostbitten feet, how significant is that time to what he will be able to do? It's extremely significant to me. Obviously, this isn't a situation where he's comfortable with the quarterback. This is, he's not in Pittsburgh anymore where Ben knows his, you know, he knows his tendencies. He knows where he wants to put the football. They've been playing together for years, so they know each other. This is a new team, a new quarterback that he has to adjust to and kind of get familiar with all over again. And the fact that he hasn't been there, whether it be for the helmet situation or whether it be for the cryotherapy foot situation, there are those are both situations that has him missing valuable time that he's supposed to be getting with his quarterback to develop that chemistry, to build that rapport with one another. And that's the part that worries me leading up to the season. Obviously, we got some time in preseason, but leading up to the season, you, you want to build that time with your quarterback, especially it being a new team and a new quarterback for you to get adjusted to. No, and it's, it's a big piece of it. And like the, the foot deal, it's just a nag, as you know. You know, a lot of guys get their toenails busted up. Different things happen. I had, had my big toenails resected just about every season at the end of camp just because they were so busted and you didn't want to deal with it through the season. But the main thing that I look at this is back with the Pittsburgh Steelers and kind of reading the tea leaves in the locker room and hearing some of the things you know, that I've heard over there is I don't think any of the offensive vets are really at a loss for the fact that he's not there. The Pittsburgh guys. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, you let one of the best receivers walk out of the room. You know, you gave up a third-round pick. They had to pay him. I guarantee you most of those vets, they're not all that disappointed. They're happy that this the circus that we're talking about right now, they don't have to answer questions on it, and they're not dealing with it. Very quickly, what was the word you used for your toenails? Resected? Resected. That's they the cut thing? them out, pulled them off. They just pull you, that's what that's I don't called? That's called the resection? That. I barely want to see toenails. the photo of Antonio Brown's feet. Definitely don't want to see that. Do box. they do that with a pedicure? I'm just curious <laughs> if that comes in one procedure. And let, me, let me not sidetrack it there. Let me go to the feet, because mm -hmm. you made this point in our meeting this morning. We always talk about athletes, world-class, super high-level athletes, which he obviously is one. 
on are so careful about everything they put in their body and do with their body. I know you have some questions about the feet. Yeah, I mean, th this one kind of baffled me. I, I, you know, when you're an athlete like Antonio Brown, you have a, a, a crop of guys around you, trainers, guys that work on your body. And this isn't your first roto. You've been in the league a number of years. You understand how to take care of your body. And also, on top of that, that wasn't your first time in the cryo chamber. That wasn't the first time doing that, taking care of your body. So for you to just not take that seriously or kind of take it for granted and go in there with wet socks and you see what happens, and not only do you cost yourself, but you cost your team some valuable time to build that chemistry that I talked about with Derek Carr, it's just baffling at, at this level of his career he would put his, his body in jeopardy like that. It's always something. I mean, we said it yesterday, and that with Antonio Brown is one of those guys. It is always something. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.